Hello, it's crazy mad scientist inventor time. I'm sure the majority of you will remember my crazy floppy disk cleaning machine from last year and my new disk copy, I mean um, backup station in my last video. Well, it's time to make this year's contraption and I've decided to make a physical game. I'm imagining a game controlled at low level by some Arduinos, but to make it fun, I want to connect it to an Amiga, probably via its serial port, which will actually provide the game to run. So let's get to it. Before we go any further, I'd just like to give a shout out to my Patreons. And if you'd like to help support me in making crazy projects like this, then please follow the links in the video description. I've always been a fan of those whack-a-mole type games that you see at some of the more classic arcades, and especially some of the seaside places you can go to here in the UK. So I'm hoping to build something a little bit like that. Now there's not going to be any whacking of moles or anything like that, because I'm thinking of something more along the lines of a floppy drive. My thoughts are, can I build several fake floppy drives that you can insert discs into and the drives can automatically eject them a bit like a toaster? But wouldn't it be also exciting if I could get them to somehow pop out so much that they fly out completely? Now that would be funny. Now the Whack-A-Mole games use pneumatics to pop the moles up, but I don't want to do anything like that. So let's take a look at some other possible options. Firstly, we have a simple motor. We could attach a long arm to it and have it spin around to push the disc out of the top. It might work, but to be able to get it to propel it out of the top, it'd have to be fairly beefy and could be quite hard to control. These motors also can come with gears attached, which are much stronger in terms of their torque, but they run slower. We could try to use a servo as they're quite quick at moving the arm to a specific position. You can also change how fast they do this and precisely choose the angle, but they're also not that fast unless you pay for the really beefy ones. My third suggestion is to use a solenoid. These are electromagnets that when you apply power, the center will pop out or suck in, depending on how they're built. They provide a bigger force when they're switched on rather than release, because the release is just controlled by a spring. The downside is they use quite a bit of power. These using four amps while they're on and they do get warm. So we have a few options, but I'm going to immediately discount the motor and the servo options. The motor, because I don't think it's going to be easy enough to control it how I want it, and for that matter, having it start quick enough to, with enough force to pop the disc out the top. I'm also discounting the servo, because I don't think it will be fast enough. Plus, reinserting the disc would mean manually moving the arm back down, forcing all the internal cogs to work in the wrong direction. And at the speed this game might be played, that will probably damage them quite quickly. So, now I'm going to start with a solenoid, and like all my previous crazy projects, I'll start with some prototyping in Tinkercad. What I've modelled here is a floppy disk sitting in some kind of box. The part below is the model of one of the solenoids I have, and this will be the first experiment. Obviously, this needs to be housed in something, so I've created this rudimentary box for it all to sit in. But I want it to have a satisfactory click when it's pushed down, so I've added this extra cupboard lock solenoid on the back. These solenoids aren't very good. If there's the slightest bit of pressure on them, they won't retract at all. However, for the purpose I'm using it for here, it should give that satisfying click as it falls into place. So I printed these to try it out. This is actually the first version I made, which I've hacked around a bit to experiment with. I revised it a little bit from the version you saw in the design, but it's clear from this that whilst the solenoid is able to pop the disc up, it's never going to be dramatic. So I need another approach. The problem is these solenoids just aren't strong enough and to become more powerful we need higher voltages and more current and I really don't want to go down that route. Plus to hold the disc at the top we're going to have to leave it switched on and they get pretty warm pretty fast. Now a few years ago I built a pop-up escape room and part of that required cupboard doors to pop open. To do that I use one of these. They provide a good strong lock but can easily be released with a short 12 volt pulse on its solenoid. And it's quite satisfying to see how far these things ping out when you press it. This could be the answer. So back to Tinkercad. And after a while I came up with this design with the two guide rails down the side. I figured if I added springs to them I could get it to push really hard when it was released. So I've printed this out to give it a test. It's handy to have these manual release levers underneath and you can see this pings out quite nicely. I could actually make this even stronger by compressing the springs more as well. There's a few things I've noticed with this. Firstly, when the disc pops up, there's a great amount of air that's pushed up too, and that's not going to be helping. Also, I don't always want it to pop completely out. Sometimes I'd like it to just merely pop up, and that's not possible with this design, so I've made some changes. 
The first thing you can see is I've changed the shape of the disc holder to allow more air to travel down the sides. I've also increased the depth of the blocks at the bottom to compress the springs more. Showing the outer case now, and you can see I've added some air holes at the top as well. And looking around the back, I've added this solenoid back in. The idea here is to optionally restrict how far the disc holder can pop up. And I'm hoping this will allow for an easy way to vary how hard the disc is thrown. So, back to the 3D printer. Hmm, well, I tried to assemble this one and it appears I made a small error. When the disc is actually in its full locked position, there isn't actually any room for the solenoid to push in, so this isn't any good. I'm going to have to redesign that and try again. First test, this is with the solenoid off, and it's quite good, it jumps out the top quite nicely. Now I'm reaching across to turn my bench power supply on which retracts the solenoid, and pop the disc up again. That was disappointing. Putting that limiter there made absolutely no difference. I also tried reprinting that with the solenoid at different heights, and the springs with different tensions, but ultimately it didn't really make any difference. And if you put the solenoid too low, then the disc doesn't really pop up high enough to be seen out of the top. I guess I should have figured this out really. The pushing force has already been applied to the disc when it hits that solenoid, so this method is just not going to work. I need to try something new. Now, the only other easy approach I can think of is to somehow vary the tension of the springs dynamically. And I think that means we're going to need to use what are called linear actuators. Linear actuators are basically a motor and a screw thread that can be used to move something attached to that thread. If you've got a 3D printer, you'll have seen these kind of mechanisms used to move the build plate up and down. Problem is, they're not exactly cheap to buy, and I'd like to ideally have, like, five of these. Doesn't matter, however. I can make my own. And this is the plan. I have a motor at the bottom, which has a screw thread attached to it. This is a stepper motor to provide the required torque to make it work. The thread screw moves the blue shape up and down, which pushes the spring against the bottom of the disc holder, providing a little bit more pressure when needed. In theory, this should work perfectly, but I won't know until I print this out. The weird yellow box represents a limit switch that I can use to detect when the blue block is at the bottom. So, a little bit of a montage later while I assemble the motor, I managed to find some shaft couplers that would connect the size of the motor head with the screw thread, and they work really well. And I've wound this block onto it so it will move up and down with the shaft. Now, for some reason I had this idea to test this now before assembling it into the unit. The biggest problem here is it's just far too slow. We're getting about two revolutions per second, and at this rate it would take a few minutes to move up and down, and that's not going to be dynamic enough for this game. I do think the idea is sound though, but not the choice of motor. So I'm going to have to use a different motor, and it's going to need some kind of gearing on it or it won't have enough torque to do this, and while you can get faster stepper motors, they're just going to get bigger and use more power. After some searching, I found these on Amazon. These tiny little motors, geared to provide 1000 RPM when run at 6 volts, already have the thread attached. They might just be what I'm looking for, and they're not too expensive either. So next up, a new design to incorporate them. And this is the new design. This time I've added a lower and upper limit switch in yellow so I can stop it before it winds off the top. This should work much better than the last design. Now making the case visible, and you can see how the limit switch is pushed through the sides of the case into the mechanism. So I've printed this and assembled it, ready for testing. It's not connected to the limiter switches, because for now, well, I'll just use the power supply to control it. The most important thing I want to check is if this approach actually provides the two different eject strengths. First test, I just want to move the motor up and down to see if it actually works. And from looking through the holes, you should be able to see this. Now reversing the polarity. Yep, now that seems to work really well, but how well does it actually pop up? Let's give that a test. So first, I'll eject it while the motor part is at the bottom. Perfect, just a little pop-up. Now let's move the motor to the top. And wait for it. Yeah, now that's popping. Fantastic, I have a working prototype. Now, they can't just go into a box looking like that. They'll need to have some sort of container or support arms or something. And I think I need to build up a box, because I need to fit like five of these inside somehow. So I've designed something that looks a little bit like this. I'm not sure if it'll work, but it looks about the right sort of size and what's more, it will fit on my 3D printer. Well, you've seen the plan anyway, that's a big step. So after some more 3D printing, which I guess is gonna take a while, I might as well start assembling them.
Well, that's the five drive bays completed, but this is a long way from a finished game. I still need to print out that box, control the drive eject mechanism, control the motors for the spring tensions for each one individually, control the LEDs on each one, and manage the eject button as well. Finally, I need to make a game out of it running on an Amiga, so there's still a lot to do. Now, by the time this video drops, the Zap Live event will have actually happened, so if I manage to get all of this working, you'll have seen it there. Failing that, you'll have to wait until the next video. Anyway, thanks for watching, don't forget to click that thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next one.